Okay, folks, so the temperature has reduced outside, and I managed to edit the other video. So I want to show you a roast, roasted cauliflower dish that for me is the ultimate. It's my ultimate favorite, and it just, I mean, if you like, if you don't like cauliflower, it, nothing will satisfy, nothing I do will make it good for you. I mean, it will make you happy, but this is really a stunning, stunning North African French version of roast cauliflower. Let it be known that in this household, roast cauliflower is delicious no matter what you do to it, even if you do nothing. So here I am removing the leaves and I'm just gonna do start out roasting the cauliflower. The oven is at 400, well it's going to be at 400. And I have a good size piece here, but I've noticed over the years, oh yeah, so basically it's cauliflower roasted with tahini uh, sauce, but it's not roasted with the tahini, it's roasted, and then the tahini is the, is the piece de la resistance. So, we're just going to, you know, what I like to do, because I've roasted cauliflower many, many times, for holidays, like in the fall, for Thanksgiving, I roast it with um, sage, or sage and garlic, or uh, other times I would roast it with um, thyme and garlic. But for this, I'm just roasting it with olive oil, salt, and pepper. And I want, in all these years, you know what, and everyone loves it. So what I'm doing here is I'm, like I've realized that kind of there's a little bit of technique involved to keep the roll, you're gonna roast for about 40 minutes. You're gonna cook it at 400 for 20, flip them and roast again for 20. But because cauliflower, if you just chop it into little florets like this one wants to be, you're just gonna end up with a wet mess and a burned wet mess. So there is a little technique to it. I tend to take the knife around the stem and try to get the big florets off like that. And then this one has a baby one next to it. So we separate that. And you just, you can do it with a knife or you can do it with your hands. And I prefer to do it usually with a knife, but this is working nicely. And what you want is you don't want your chunks to be, if you're gonna roast for 40 minutes, you want a flat side to get the browning. So that's a tip. So I'm just cutting a big florette into two. Okay, goes in the bowl. This one's too small to cut, goes in the bowl. I'll see about that one later. This one, I can cut the small from the big, like that, goes in the bowl. You don't need to slice it because it'll produce. If I had sliced that, like say this way, this one would have disintegrated into tiny pieces. So we're trying to avoid um, see, now this one's too large to do into two, so I'm doing it into three, cutting through the stalk. If you see what I mean, you want them to be chunky, you want them to hold up. I think this one can be in two, this one can be in two, this one can be in two. You want them to hold up after roast, like during, you know, during and after the roast. So you have nice pieces to um, 
chew on, not little pieces like that cooked in oil and burnt, you know, basically slush. So we don't want that and we don't use that. So I'm just gonna have these pieces. This one doesn't need to be cut. And this is just one head and it's a fairly large one. But I'm just doing what I have, which is good. This one, no, I'm gonna leave it. Because my pan, my tray here is only so big. And let's get rid of the stock in this case. And now that is the kind of the apex of the thing. And so I think that can go into four like that. Press two, that's four. So notice I didn't separate these little ones. We don't want that. So now we add our olive oil because this is going to be uh, drenched with flavor afterward. I'm not adding herbs or garlic. I'm adding, I'm seasoning it. And I'm going to, with salt and pepper, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to make sure that the, the salt, we're just going to make sure that everything's coated before we put it on the tray. The oven's only at 300 right now. It's getting larger. And here, for the beginning, you want the flat sides down. So take a little care about that because those are going to brown that's the flat side's going to brown first it doesn't have to be neat and tidy like i'm pretending here just throw them on but make sure the flat sides are down the cut sides by flat i mean cut and there's some of that drizzle and you know what it's not gonna take away or add anything so i'm throwing it in but it's really not going to be part of the final dish. I had this dish. Well, first of all, I've been making roast cauliflower for ages because the family loves it. And you just add garlic and herbs and whatever when you're pan roasting like this. I put foil on here because it's just easier for cleanup. So we're pan roasting. I'm gonna save this bowl with the olive oil. There's no meat involved, so I might toss them back in afterwards, which saves cleanup, saves, and saves, saves the dish. So when this gets to three, 400, I'm going to put in, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. Yeah, oh, I know what I'm forgetting. The whole point, the story, which is, um, so I love it. I love roasted cauliflower, the best of all roasted things. Of course, I love all roasted vegetables, but I was in a, a little, uh, bistro, French bistro on the Lower East Side one night. And I just, you know, I had, maybe I had a beer or something. And then I looked at their tasting menu and it showed up as cauliflower, just cauliflower or something, mm -hmm. cauliflower parisienne or something. And when it came, it was so freaking delicious. And it was just like a tapas. So this makes a great side dish or a tapas or a small plate. But you can also have it as a side at your family gathering. I said, what is, what's the sauce? And she said, oh, it's just tahini, tahini sauce. So in fact, it was an Algerian French restaurant. And there are many, many such places in Manhattan. And, but that was so simple and so perfect that I made it myself. And that's the whole joy of cooking at home. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and I do have large chunks. So let's just see what we've got here. I do think we have the right um, 
I see the browning on the flat side. Okay, so we really do need to flip these. And then I'll cut through, which is what we see. This is the kind of browning you really want. So we want to flip them carefully. But sometimes you just can't flip them all. Like if you have a giant tray, like I do sometimes for cooking. So, uh, like cooking for uh, a large group. So we don't want burning, we just want to flip. And it's interesting that one side got more, this has, seems to have more heat than that. Okay, that didn't turn. Why? There, okay. So, I don't know, I think, I think we have, you can tell they're not all totally roasted. through, I mean cooked through. So let's just, you know, check again. Okay, that's not good. But we have a nice color. And I don't really want more color than that. I just want it to be cooked through. So this is going to be, the next stage here is going to be 15 minutes, not 20. All right. Back in we go. I'll probably check at 10. I don't want burnt stuff. Okay, folks, so the second side, it's only been nine minutes. And we're just gonna check it out. I think we're probably ready with the roasted. Oh yeah, that looks really good. I, I wanna prevent it from cooking further, so I'm just going to throw it back into the bowl where the oil and the seasoning is, and then I'm going to tint it with the foil, keep it nice and warm, and then turn off the oven. Maybe I even, maybe that temperature was too high, maybe 375 would have been good. So now I have the tahini. I don't think I need this. Hold on. I don't need the flipper, but I do need a cup measure. Oh, and that's my tahini is separated. So all the sesame seed gorgeousness is at the bottom, and the oil is at the top. So I need to stir that up as much as I can. I have a fresh jar tahini, like a newer jar, but I can't find it. So I'm just gonna use what I have. And it's, tahini is basically a sesame seed paste, and the oils from the sesame seeds are included. And I just wanna get that kind of mixed up. And I want to get my lemon and my garlic. I have two lemons. And then we need to get this into a sauce. Hold on. I should have done this before I made the video, but I can't find the jar I bought. There's so when I buy a lot of things, they go into different locations, and I can't get uh, often attack on whether on where they are. So I need garlic and for this all I need. Say two cloves. I'm gonna do the hand method to get them. Huh, oops, to get the cloves uh, skins off. Hand method. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Of course, pieces went in there. Hand method. Hold on. 
there's a piece in there. Oops, don't do it. Okay. Put your goggles on. Anyway, there's one. Oops. It's not ready. Okay, keep going. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And they come off like that. And then I have a special um, machine or, or device I use to get it minced. But of course, you can mess with a knife like I do, or normally like this. But I like using this rocking mincer. There we go. Minced. Do the bottom too. Uh, the second one. This is fresh. It's going to be very tangy because it's not going to be cooked down. Let's get that on. Then we want, uh, we're going to whisk. But first we have to get this tahini going. And I'm going to do a cut of it. Okay, there's one. It looks like a third of a cup. Here's a... Uh, Looks like a half a cup. I'm not going to put a measure at this point because it's really to taste. So, it shouldn't be all this chunky. I'm going to put some of the oil in. This one has been sitting in the cupboard, so it's not really a great example. Okay, that's a cup with some oil. We'll add some oil. We're going to add some lemon. I'm going to cut these into quarters so I can squeeze them. I'm not going to use both of them at the moment, but I am going to keep the pips out. Pips out. I'm going to use one whole lemon for this right now, and then we'll taste it. And we'll add. Oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh dear. And we're gonna take the pips out. And by using your hand as a strainer. Okay, that's a lot of juice. That's quite nice. And then um, I think I'm going to also add quarter cup of water but I'll wait to see how this blends up because we want it to be kind of runny. We want it to be pourable so let's just get this going. And you know what? I think I need some hot water. So I need some tap water. I'm going to add a quarter cup uh, when it gets hot. So we're just going to mix this up. I'll add a little bit more of the oil from the tahini. And the hot water. But only half of it. I don't want it to be totally runny. I just want it to be a sauce. And at that, at, when it becomes a sauce, as you can see, of course it's spraying all over me. It's very thick. Add the rest of the water. And then you'd add the fresh chopped parsley. I think that I'm getting there, but I want more lemon. 
We'll taste it. We'll add some pepper. Just gonna use a half a lemon right now. See what's going on. Okay. Okay, so we have the paste. So it's at a paste stage. I'm gonna add some more lemon. I'm gonna add some more garlic. I'm gonna add some more hot water. Another quarter. Remember, my tahini wasn't very, um, my tahini had settled, so it became solid at the bottom. I'm going to add a little more oil, sesame oil from the tea, so it's not watering. It's continuous, it's not watered down, but has a beautiful flavor. All right, look at that. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a taste. And we might have to add salt. Yeah. Mmm. That's good. Oh my god. I mean, there's not too much lemon. Just the right amount. There's not too much garlic. We're going to add some pepper and some salt. And a little bit of pepper. Just a little bit of salt. Maybe a little more. Mmm. That's really heavenly. Okay. Then, what you would do is... Serve it in individual dishes, or just flop this around, or, oh, you know what, I forgot, hold on, I need the parsley. I don't really think I need uh, the parsley to the sauce. But I do want parsley as a brightness. It has a kind of, I call it a farmy flavor. But maybe I will add it to the sauce. Let's just see. Or we'll just add it on top. I think on top is fine. So I'm going to pour some over. Like that. And then we're going to add that. And then we're going to pour some more. I, mind you, I've made more than one is required to. Because I'm going to make more roasted cauliflower. I'm going to serve the sauce. Yum. And I guess I'll take a photograph. That looks really good. Let's get my um, towel out. And let's put, let's make it nice for your guests. Obviously, this is a small portion. And it will be gone in days and minutes, I should say. And that's really one of my most favorite vegetarian uh, vegetable side dishes of all time. Mm 